Hey, this is Joe with Grow It Build It, and today I'm going to show you a profile on showy tick trefoil. One of the many types of tick trefoil that grows in North America, showy tick trefoil is one of the prettier species. With its long panicles of pink to purple flowers, it makes for a really beautiful sight in midsummer. This is a flower that I first read about roughly 10 years ago and was surprised by how beneficial it was for wildlife as a whole, and I've grown it ever since. I'm going to make a full profile on this plant, but I want to state something up front. Lots of viewers to this channel may like these videos to see if they would work in their garden. And based on my experience, this particular plant is better suited to a more wild area, like a micro prairie, a border, a food plot, meadow, something like that. I have grown it in mulched flower beds in the past, and while it can work, it isn't always the best choice for several reasons that I'll discuss later. But I just wanted to get that out of the way up front. But if you're interested in learning about this flower and how it interacts with nature, stick around. This will be a complete profile on the plant, including what is showy tick trefoil and its benefits, identification and characteristics, growing conditions, grow it from seed, wildlife and garden uses, and then we will review. So I hope you stick around and learn about this interesting flower. Showy tick trefoil is a herbaceous perennial native to Central and Eastern North America. The primary native range is from Kansas to Manitoba, Canada, and then straight east to the Atlantic Ocean. And scientifically, it's known as Desmodium canadense. Now, there are over 50 different trick trefoil plants or members of the Desmodium genus that are native to North America. And while I've encountered many in my travels, showy tick trefoil, as its common name would imply, is just about the most visually attractive, producing so many flowers. You know, it, it makes these beautiful pink to purple flowers in July and August. And it is a legume slash member of the pea family, meaning it will fix nitrogen to the soil for its own use during the growing season. So it's a great flower for poor soils as it can make its own fertilizer. Pros and cons. Pro. Showy tick trefoil is beautiful. If you like pink flowers, then planting groups of these can really brighten up an area. The flowers are very showy and they change color from a somewhat light pink lavender to a darker purple blue color as the blooming progresses. Now, also along with the beauty is the foliage. The foliage of this plant is really attractive in early spring to midsummer. Later in the season, it may be a, a bit beat up from being nibbled on by insects, but such is the food web, it's gonna happen. And wildlife. This is a host plant for several caterpillars, and it also is a food source for many other mammals and birds, all of which are part of the food chain. Cons, flopping. This plant is prone to flopping or leaning. It evolved in a prairie setting, you know, you have stiff competition from the surrounding plants that help keep it upright naturally. In open mulched flower beds though, you may be having to stake the plant. Seeds. The seeds of this plant will stick to fur and clothes, and it's actually kind of annoying to me. If I'm going to go into my backyard wildflower area to plant something, I will often deadhead these things so I don't have the seeds all stuck to my clothes, so I don't have to pick them off. About those seeds. If you're wondering where the common name tick trefoil comes from, I'm pretty sure it arises from the seeds sticking to your clothes and resembling ticks. So, there you go. And lastly, it can be aggressive. So, it produces quite a few seeds, and with its propensity to lay down, particularly at the end of the season, it can be a cause for self-seeding. And established plants can be a little tough to remove with the short taproot that they have. Now, if you guys are liking this video, uh, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And as always, this entire video exists as an article at my website at growitbuilt.com. Just Google Shall We Take Tree Foil, Grow It, Build It to get there, as you can save it for a quick reference later on. Identification and Characteristics So in full sun, you'll see these plants get three to five feet tall, and they often stay upright in wild areas. Um, but the stalk and stem will be green to reddish brown and have fine white hairs on it. Now the leaves are alternately arranged, and they're compound with three leaflets on mature plants. Each leaflet is two to four inches long by one to two inches wide, lancelot in shape, and the underside of the leaves will have small hairs that can be kind of sticky or feel sticky, like they kind of grab to your clothes when you brush against it. And also this is what the plant will look like when it first emerges in spring. All right, for flowers, panicles of flowers occur at the end of the stalks. It's clusters of pea style blooms that are roughly a half inch long on short, tiny stems. Initially, they are gonna be light pink and lavender, turning a dark blue purple when approaching the end of the blooming. The total blooming period lasts roughly three weeks in midsummer. 
The root system of this plant is primarily a tap root that is fairly stout. Um, it doesn't go super deep, but it's tough to move one of these. And for growing conditions, well, this is a prairie plant. So it'll do best in full sun, which is at least six hours of direct sunlight per day. It can go in partial sun, which is four to six hours, but it won't get as large or make as many flowers. For moisture, it'll do well in moist to slightly dry soil, so it's fairly adaptable. And for soil texture, it can do well in poor sandy loam to clay loam, as long as it can drain somewhat. How to save seed. So to save seed, wait about a month or two after blooming. Where the flowers were, you will see these little flat pods form, like pea pods. They start out green, but once they turn brown, they are ready to harvest. Simply pull them off and place them into a container and set it into a dark, dry place for another week or so to make sure it's dry. And that's all you actually have to do to save the seed. You can then store it in an envelope or a Ziploc bag once it's dry for a long time. But to grow it from seed, you'll want to remove the husk of the pod. And this can be done by simply peeling it back using your fingernail. And I like to do it on a plate as it'll capture anything that may fall. For germination requirements, these seeds need scarification. So I have a whole video on different ways to scarify seeds, and I've done a couple of ways on this. I've mainly done it by using sandpaper. Now, these seeds are pretty tiny though, and it's kind of hard for me to pinch the seed with my fingers. I'm still able to do it for using sandpaper. You just rub it on sandpaper a few times until the color starts to change, and then you know the coats have been, the outer hard coat has been removed, and you're done. The seed could now be planted. But for an alternative way to scarify the seed, you can simply boil some water, remove it from the boil and wait around 10 seconds or so, and then pour it over the seeds in a coffee cup and let it soak for 24 hours. If the seeds have imbibed water, you know, swollen up, then they can be planted. If not, repeat and wait until they swell up with water. Some years back, I made a test between sandpaper and just soaking the seeds in hot tap water and found that that wasn't good enough for the soak. You needed the boiling water to make it work. But once you've scarified the seeds, plant them in a quarter inch deep in a suitable container with moist potting soil. You can winter sow these or just wait until spring because they, they don't have any stratification requirements, just scarification. But this is what the seedlings will look like just after germination. When it comes to wildlife, showy tick trefoil has lots of big benefits, but not in the way we normally think of flowers. The flowers primarily attract native bees that seek pollen, such as bumble and leaf cutters. Now, there are some references that state that the flowers don't produce any nectar, but that can't be right, as occasionally I do see a butterfly, but not often. And based on my experience, the flowers of this plant are not that busy when it comes to pollinators in comparison to many other species that bloom concurrently. But showy tick trefoil supports pollinators in other ways. A big benefit showy tick trefoil has for insects is that it is a host plant for at least three different butterflies, the eastern tail blue, the hoary edge, gray hair streak, and the silver spotted skipper. But it doesn't stop there, as other insects will feed on the foliage. Leaf miners, grasshoppers, weevils, and gallflies will eat the leaves. And unfortunately, we also have to include the Japanese beetle to this list. But most of these insects are all part of the food web all the same. But beyond insects though, showy tick trefoil is food for deer, rabbits, groundhogs, and other mammals. And the birds use it as cover as well as eat the seeds. Um, you know, larger game birds like turkey and such will. So if you are interested in wildlife, food plots, or just general habitat, showy tick trefoil can be really good for it. For garden uses, as I stated earlier, this plant is probably not the best choice for a formal mulched flower bed. It has a tendency to flop, um, you could perform the Chelsea Chop on it in early June to help in this regard. Um, but if you're looking for pure aesthetics, then the foliage may look a bit damaged toward the end of the season and it will suffer some insect damage. Also, I don't particularly find the seed heads attractive, but that's just my personal preference. However, if you are mainly growing your garden to support wildlife, then this is a great choice as I've already listed off all the uh, wildlife that benefits from it. So if you have a wild area, a food plot, a meadow, or a micro prairie, border garden, this is a good addition or component to that mixture for all the wildlife it supports. Okay, time to review. Showy tick trefoil is a perennial flower native to Central and Eastern North America. It blooms pink to purple flowers in full sun and well-draining soil for several weeks in midsummer. The blooms attract some native bees and a few butterflies. However, the butterfly caterpillars are hosted by the foliage, and other insects eat the foliage as well. While it is showy, it is better for a wild area rather than a formal mulched flower bed, and that's just because it has a tendency to flop or lay down. 
and this can lead to self-seeding in the formal mulch flower bed. And the only other drawback is that the seeds stick to clothes and fur, like pet fur and such. But it is easy and quick to establish. It is a beautiful flower, and the foliage does look great most of the year, although by the end of the summer it may not look as nice. But that's all I've got on this topic. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button as it helps me out and I truly do appreciate it. If you have any questions, ask in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, yeah, you guys all have a good one.